Welcome everybody to How Fast Will It Go and today we're dealing with the 2011 Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG Now this has 1,212 horsepower, 831 pound-speed of torque with a 5.7 litre twin turbocharged V10 engine The car itself now weighs 3,088 pounds, has all-wheel drive and it can now do 0 to 60 in 1.735 seconds and 0 to 103.759 seconds so well aware that this car has the same engine and same power as the Lotus Esprit from the previous episode but I figured it would be interesting to see the difference between a uh, older car and a more modern car with the exact same engine and obviously both having all wheel drive now there are some differences between this and the Lotus, the Lotus was far lighter that was uh, more than 500 pounds lighter than this vehicle but this is quicker in terms of acceleration and uh, it does have more modern aerodynamics but the Lotus does did have the uh, far older gearbox which generally does promote higher rates of top speed so uh, yeah it's going to be interesting to see how uh, this evens out in comparison to that car because they have the same power, same torque and theoretically should be around the same in terms of speed but there are obviously some differences so let's get out there and uh, see what those differences uh, uh, make happen with this vehicle so yeah, but it being more modern is inevitably going to make this a uh, safer car to drive. Uh, it's certainly going to have better handling, or which at least should, because it's got more modern suspension, brakes, tyres, that have been further upgraded to be even more useful. useful. So, uh, yeah, we're already up to 240, there's 245, 250, 255, 260... 265, 266, 267, 268, nope, 267, it only blipped 268. Uh, the Lotus Esprit got up to 269 miles an hour. So this is a couple of miles an hour off that. I know we slightly saw 268, but we weren't, you know, holding that speed. So 267 for now, which is still not bad. Uh, most, a lot of other Mercedes haven't been quite this quick. Which is the quickest? It might well be that a AM, the uh, AMG GT four door coupe, whatever it's called. This is still pretty quick. It's just a shame that we really don't have the most wider variety of engines to swap into cars like this. This V10 does seem to be the most popular that you can swap into a, uh, most vehicles, especially in terms of you know front engine vehicles, rear, uh, mid engine vehicles, it seems to be uh, used on a wide variety of cars, older ones and newer ones. But it's easy to see why more than 1200 horsepower is still a bad amount of horsepower, even if it doesn't have quite as much in the way of torque, which I think will ultimately harm this car's ability to get up to a high rate of speed because it is heavier and therefore the lack of torque will make mean that it struggles to uh, gain speed at the higher speeds we get up to. Yeah, you can see it's not really accelerating all that well once we're up to these kind of speeds and especially on this side of the motorway which does have some uh, uphill gradients. Yeah, it's definitely struggling. The Lotus didn't quite struggle this much because of how uh, little it weighs, but this Mercedes is quite a lot heavier, as I stated earlier. More than 500 pounds heavier, which is certainly making a difference in terms of gaining speed uphill. But 267 is still a really, really good top speed, and it's, I think, one of the quickest Mercedes that we've had so far on this series. I'll just check. But, yeah. That means we are at least quicker, as quick as a Jaguar XFRS, an Alfa Romeo Force 8C Compositione, Pagani Huayra BC, Maserati MC12 Versione Corsa, Radical RXC Turbo, Vauxhall VX220 Turbo, Lexus LFA, and a Porsche 917-20. In terms of other Mercedes, well, the AMG GTR was only 260 mile an hour, so we're definitely quicker than that. Uh, the 300 SLR was also 260. The SL65 AMG Black Series was only 245. Uh, but the Hammer Coupe was 275. 
the AMG GT4 de Coupe I talked about earlier was 270 and the Mercedes AMG E63S was 268 and so was the AMG CLK GTR so we're a uh, fifth fastest in terms of Mercedes that we've had on this series so far which is still not bad because it is only one mile an hour behind a couple of them and uh, yeah which is no surprise given that CLK GTR is a fully fed race car so it had a lot more power than this the uh, E63S was already came with all wheel drive and despite being a more modern car didn't struggle with its gearbox and again I think had more power and uh, that's the same with the uh, GT4 door coupe and the Hammer coupe as well so uh, yeah still fairly reasonable it handled really rather well it's just nothing all that spectacular really as far as vehicles go on this series nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye